Hey Don, I would like to introduce you to my new friend Spike. He's a little prickly, but he's a good friend. Becky, you do know that he is a plant, right? I know he's a plant, but we have a lot in common, like DNA. That's actually a really good point. You know, DNA is in every living thing. It stands for, in case you didn't know, deoxyribonucleic acid. And it's a code inside the cells of living things that tells their bodies or, you know, their leaves to grow into what they're meant to be. That is really cool. You know, it would be great if we could see what DNA looks like. Actually, we can, okay? We have an experiment that we can show you how to do with stuff that you may have lying around the house that'll show you how to extract DNA from plant cells and look at it without using a microscope. That's amazing. Let's go do it. Let's do it. To the lab. Let's go. in the STEM lab at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. And today on Real Science, we are going to extract DNA from a plant cell. Yay! But first, let's talk a little bit about cells and their organelles. All living things are made out of cells. Inside of the cells are organelles or parts of the cell with specific jobs. The outermost organelle is the cell wall, which is hard and gives its plant a rigid structure. The cell membrane is just underneath the cell wall and holds all of the organelles inside. The other organelle we're gonna talk about is the nucleus. It is the control center of the cell and contains the DNA or genetic code. Wow! If you're following along at home or in the classroom, here are the materials you're gonna need. You're gonna need strawberries, clear plastic bags with a zip top, popsicle sticks or coffee stirrers, dish soap, clear plastic cups, and rubbing alcohol. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to chop up our strawberries into small pieces. We recommend having an adult help you with this because knives are sharp and safety first. The next thing we're gonna do is put our diced strawberries into a plastic bag. Make sure it's one with a zip top so you keep all your strawberries inside of the bag. I'm gonna hand it to Becky here in a second and she's gonna do her best to mash those strawberries up into the mushiest, pulpiest slurry that she can. And the reason I'm going to mash them is I wanna break up that cell wall or that hard, rigid structure. This is like when you chew, whenever you eat a strawberry at home, your teeth chomp through that cell wall. Now in a second, we are going to switch uh, tactics to break through the cell membrane because the cell membrane itself is kind of soft and squishy. So mushing it like this doesn't work terribly well. We have to use a little bit of chemistry. I love chemistry. Me too. Okay, you think you're ready? I think I have some nice mushy strawberries. All right, so put this here. Becky, please pour a little water on top. All right. In goes the water. That just helps our soap dissolve a little quicker and then squeeze in some dish soap. Nice big squirt of dish soap. Zip the top back up again. And then I am going to do a little bit of mixing, which is gonna look suspiciously like squishing because we don't wanna mix it too hard. If we mix it too hard, we might get soap suds in the mixture and that would make our DNA extraction a little more difficult but we're using the soap because the cell membrane is made of basically fats. Mm -hmm. And when you're washing your dishes and you need to get the grease off, you usually use dish soap to break it apart. So a dish soap will get through the cell membrane and also break us into the nucleus to allow the DNA to float free outside of all of the strawberry cells we are working with. So believe it or not, there's some DNA already in that liquid. We just can't see it quite yet. We gotta separate it with a, a different chemical. So here we go, we're gonna pour it into a clear plastic cup for our final step. There we go, and the next thing we're gonna add is some rubbing alcohol. Now we have kept this in the freezer for a couple hours. You want to have your rubbing alcohol be as cold as you can. And the higher the concentration you can find, the better, but 70% will work just fine. The real trick is pouring it so we get a layer of alcohol floating on top of our strawberries instead of mixed in with the rest of it because the DNA is attracted up into that alcohol layer. It's kind of like when we mix oil and water, the oil sits on top. Right, the, the uh, alcohol has lower density than the strawberries and water, so it floats on top. Now, to get a lot of DNA, 
This takes a few minutes. So instead of making you wait while we do that. It gets kind of boring. We're going to swap this out for one we've already prepared. Dun, dun, dun. And I am going to, Becky, if you could do me the honor of grabbing me a stir All stick. Right. We're going to pull a big glob of this out and deposit it on our Petri dish. Now, when I think of DNA, I usually think of the double helix structure, but that doesn't look too double helixy to me. Well, you're correct, Becky, in that DNA does have a double helix structure like our model here, but that's the microscopic level of DNA. You need a very powerful scanning electron microscope to even begin to see the double helix. And since we don't have one of those, what we have done is gathered up trillions of clumps of DNA all piled and coiled on top of each other into one big Blob. So basically, it's a whole bunch of double helixes folded over on top of each right. other. Right. I like to say that it's like going to the beach. If you want to look at one grain of sand, it's kind of tough because they're really, really small. But if you put a trillion of them next to the water, you call it a beach, you can look at sand all day. We group together so many pieces of DNA, each with its own individual double helix structure, that we can look at it without a microscope, without even a magnifying That's so cool. And now I can say I have seen DNA. And if you do this at home or in the classroom, you can see DNA too. Join us next time on Real, Real Science. Science. Thank you so much for watching. If you try this experiment, take a few photos and share them with us using this hashtag. We'd love to see what you came up with.